Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good to see you all this morning. Couple of announcements. Praise, praise, uh, and liberated living study tonight. Galatians study at six o'clock. Uh, I'll be preaching the first community service, um, Lenten service at uh, Dry Run Brethren on Tuesday, and praise team will meet on Thursday. Um, are there any other announcements? Greet one another as we prepare to sing. Amazing love. 
machine out of practice state and I used it for the first time yesterday on a fresh head and it seems okay so I'm trusting in him. Amen. 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 You what else? Thank God for the sunshine. Amen. Spring's coming. Hallelujah. It's gonna be nice for the next couple weeks. I forget the verse number, but I want to praise God that he searches to and fro for us, looking for somebody to show his strength to. Yep, yep. Anybody else? Number 198, Wonderful Grace of Jesus.
The lady that has cancer, Sean. Yeah, Sean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's on our list. Oh, yeah. she is. Should have been. I thought I put her on. I don't see her. Okay. Yeah, she had back surgery and they found cancer. Anybody else? Jesus name we give you thanks and praise as we intercede for these on our prayer list those that we've added this morning father we know nothing's impossible with you we come confidently and boldly before your throne of grace because it is your grace that is our sufficiency yes. may that grace father touch these lives this morning 
May they just open up their hearts and just receive an overflowing touch of your grace. Father, we thank you that you are a merciful God in spite of what the enemy wants to throw at us. Father, we thank you that we have authority over him. Yes. Thank and we take Jesus. that authority because of the name of Jesus. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, we speak healing and wholeness to these. Yes. Father, that the power of your Holy Spirit would be revealed through them to those that are even ministering to them. That's right. Father, there's, there are reasons why you can touch people even with, pe with other people who are suffering different things. Yes. You can touch lives yeah. using them. Father, as they confidently come before you, as they confidently trust you, may they be a witness for your glory and your grace and power to those around them. Father, thank you for what you've done for us in Jesus. Yes. Thank you for those first responders and our military personnel, Father. Thank you for them. Bless them. Those that don't know you, Father, this, may this day be that day that someone shares Jesus just right for them they would come to, to us, that saving knowledge of him. Thank you, Father, for this country. Thank you for the privilege of living here. Thank you for you know, that un, 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 unbounding grace that has put us into this place. That's right. And Father, we pray for our leaders that they would come to realize that Jesus is the answer for this nation, mm -hmm. just as he was when it began. That your grace, your power, and your mercy are what we need today. Father, help us to focus on your will. Father, just open up their hearts that they might see that only when we trust in you do we really have that one nation truly under you and divisible. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem that both Jew and Arab would come to realize Jesus is the Messiah and Lord and Savior. Their Lord and Savior. And that they would come to realize that he's the answer for peace for the Middle East. All these things, Father, we give you praise. We give you thanks. And it's all because of Jesus, in whose name we pray the prayer that he's taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's receive our morning ties. Use them for your glory. Touch somebody's life for Jesus. And we give you the praise in his name. Amen. Amen. Before you sit down, number 190. Amen.
spending the Lenten season on the overall theme of the cross to glory. The cross to glory. And today we start with Matthew chapter 16. And we'll invest some time there this morning because it all starts right here in this passage. The whole Lenten concept, the whole salvation concept enters right here from Matthew chapter 16. <clears throat> and I want us to look at the 24th verse to begin with. Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. <clears throat> if anyone desires to come after me or follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. We sing an old hymn. Nearer, my God, to thee. Nearer to thee. Even though it be a cross that raiseth me, still all my song shall be nearer, my God, to thee. Nearer, my God, to thee. Nearer to thee. And notice that second verse. Even though it be a cross that raiseth me, it's only by virtue of the cross that we will ever get to come nearer and nearer and nearer to Jesus. There are times when we approach a traffic signal, hoping to get through it, only for it to turn red on us. <clears throat> Any of you ever hope to get through one before it turns red? <clears throat> Deborah has said on occasion, Oh, no, we got stopped by another red light. To which my comment to her is, well, it probably saved us from an accident down the road. And that's a simple cross. But the reality is, is that whenever a struggle comes our way, it's only a greater opportunity for us to get nearer, my God, to thee. Our biggest problem is that we begin to focus on the problem instead of on the solution. We focus too often on the problem instead of the grace of God that will draw us nearer to him. Even though it be a cross that raiseth me, still all my song shall be nearer, my God, to thee. In any kind of crisis situation, the greatest place we can go is to the Lord. Mm -hmm. The greatest place answer for our problem or circumstance is still him. Paul, I mean, Jesus talks about the condition of discipleship. The condition of discipleship. And he talks about denying ourselves taking up the cross and following him. But are we ready for that? Are we really ready for the cross? His? 
and our own. In the, in the old hymn, the old rugged cross, it says it's an emblem of suffering and shame. But that suffering and shame has become the very hallmark of our glory. It's because of what he went through that we have an opportunity to experience his glorious presence. The emblem of suffering and shame just for us. A cross just for us. We adorn it on our necks, put it on our steeples, engrave it on our tombstones. But discipleship has to be more than just decoration. Can't be just wearing it. It has to be bearing it. If we really claim that Jesus is the answer and that we really are following him, then it ought to be evident to everyone around us, regardless of our situation or circumstance. Sometimes those negative circumstances that come our way are precisely the time in which our witness can be strongest in someone's life. Never look at a problem as anything else but an opportunity to shine for Jesus. Are you hearing me this morning? Though the times, they certainly are changing. Still, to be called a Christian is not unusual. 77%, 77% of people in the United States would still somehow claim to be a Christian. But to be a Christian is more than just being respectable. And too often, we've chosen to be respectable instead of radical. But you see, when Jesus did what Jesus did and what Jesus is calling us to do, it's not respectable, it's radical. Right, amen. It's calling for dyna dynamic change to take place in our lives. It's no longer placid. It's peculiar. It's no longer comfortable. It's to be crucified. And are we ready for that? If we really understood the cross, if we really understood what God's calling us to do, would it hold that same attraction to us? Take up. Deny yourself. It calls for total commitment, complete obedience, absolute surrender to his claims. Even though it be a cross. This will be our challenge during the Lenten season. To really face up with what it means to be cross bearers. Today we actually begin our journey at Caesarea Philippi. Beginning at the 13th verse of Matthew. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples saying, Who do men say that I am? that I, the Son of Man, am. And so they said, some say John the Baptist, and some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Amen. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Praise the Lord. Then he commanded them, his disciples, that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. Stopping there for a moment. You see, that's just a starting point. But it's such an important starting point. Who do you say I am? This is a high point as it's growing closer and closer to the end of Jesus' life on earth. This becomes a very strong and high point in the discipleship process. Who do you say I am? It's obedient faith in this confession. It's obedient faith that, that separates disciples from everybody else. Peter here isn't complimenting Jesus, nor simply adoring him. He's not following him as a fan here, like some fan on a golf tournament following after their favorite golfer. He confesses him as the Messiah, as the fulfiller of all the ancient promises. This is where discipleship begins. It begins with this confession. And by making it, there naturally follows another confession. A confession that we all have to make. All we like sheep have gone astray. And the Lord laid upon him the iniquity of us all. The confession that Jesus really is the Messiah, really is the Christ, really is the anointed of God, then penetrates our hearts and helps us understand we are not worthy of what he's doing because we've all blown it we've all made our share of mistakes we've all failed we've all fallen short of the glory of God and God laid upon him the iniquity of us all mm -hmm. it's all on Jesus thank you Jesus all of our failures yep. thank you Jesus all of our lack all of our betrayals. You see, if he is the Messiah, if Jesus really is the Messiah that Peter confesses here, <clears throat> that he's the fulfiller of God's plan and God's purpose. Great. And God's plan and God's purpose has always been towards us. It was for us. At this moment, Peter receives a special gift of faith. And Jesus says, Peter, my father revealed that to you. My father revealed that to you. You opened up your heart and you received a message from God is what he's saying. You've opened yourself to a point where you could see something that for some strange reason others couldn't see. But I want us to understand it's faith. It's not science. It's not scientific. 
Man's wisdom never got anyone close to God anyway. Man's wisdom never got God, anybody close to God. Think about it for a moment. 90% of all scientists are living today. 90% of all scientists are living today. And yet they cannot prove to be false anything about God that we claim to be true. That's right. Never been able to. When this confession, confession reaches the heart, everything changes. When we really come to grips with the reality, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. When that penetrates our hearts, everything changes. And the scientific evidence of that change is irrefutable. When Christ comes in and a life is transformed, science mouth just drops open and they stand aghast. How can it happen? Because they haven't got a clue. Haven't got a clue. The impact is scientifically observable in, in people's lives. I've seen drug addicts totally, totally clean just by having Jesus come into their lives. I've seen, I've seen homosexual individuals totally change their life because Jesus comes in. It's observable, scientifically observable. And yet science can in no way, shape, or form ever refute it. It's the cross that makes it all possible. Rescuing us from our sin, from death, and from hell. No longer do we have to fear any of it. Right. Because Amen. Jesus is alive and well. Amen. And the cross makes a difference Amen. for me. That's right. Let the wise see it. Let them be confounded by it. But let it be known to them, none the less, Jesus and his cross makes a difference. Amen. Jesus is the answer. Because Jesus is the Messiah, yep. the Lord, the Christ, the promised one. And the sacrifice. And as we would go on to see in that text, from that time Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. And then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. And I want you to understand that you need to come out on Tuesday to hear the rest of that story from me. But he turned to Peter and he said, Get behind me, Satan, you are, on the, you are an offense to me, for you're not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Just like Peter, we will fail at times. For none of us are righteous in ourselves. But if the word of, cro of the cross means anything at all, it means forgiveness. And we find later on when Jesus is raised from the dead as he comes to Peter... But that forgiveness is very obvious and real.
the rest of the text you may read for yourself. I just want to share this last kind of thought. Because you see now, on this side of the cross, on this side of resurrection, now it's preparation time. Preparation time for the struggle, for his and ours, from this text on. From this moment when he, can, when he tells them, I'm going to die, I'm going to be crucified. Now the struggle really begins for him and also for us. Because he's just not talking about his cross now. He's talking about ours. Verse 21 says, From that time, Jesus began to demonstrate, began to show the disciples what is going to happen. The chief priests, the scribes, they're going to make sure that he's killed. But Jesus gives them this word. On the third day, I'm going to get up. On the third day, I'm going to be raised. Even though I'm going to go through the suffering, even though I'm going to go through the crucifixion, even though they're going to kill me, it's not the, it's not the end. It's only the next step to the beginning. It's only the next step for us to have a beginning. But my friends, it takes a commitment to the cross. Both his and ours. We cannot divide our loyalties between what we want and what Christ orders. We can't divide our loyalties between doing it his way and our way. Commitment. Following Jesus. Leads to a cross. His and ours. If anyone would come after me. If anyone would come after me. He must take up his cross and follow me. That's what Lent's all about. That we focus not just on what he did, but what we're supposed to do. I don't know how many of you have chosen to give up something for Lent. Oftentimes people do. Somehow it's considered a sacrifice. Giving up bubble gum. Sacrifice, right? Giving up a meal. Sacrifice, right? But unless we're doing something to really sacrifice, what good is it? Take up your cross. Follow me. He can't make it any clearer. He can't make it any plainer. If you want to be a disciple, you've got to follow Jesus. If you want to be a disciple, we've got to do it his way. If you want to be a disciple, you'll find yourself not just at the foot of the cross, but carrying it too. And the greatest cross you'll ever carry, everywhere you go, is the name of Jesus. And that's why that old song says, take the name of Jesus with you. Take it with you. Even in the struggles. Even in the pain. Even in the discouragement. 
even when everybody else puts you down. Take the name of Jesus. My friends, it's the only name that really matters because it's the only name we'll ever carry into heaven. The name of Jesus on the cross. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Is that the confession that we live? Pray with me. Father God, thank you for the cross. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you, Father, that your grace brought Jesus to the cross. Thank you that your grace emanates from the cross. Thank you that your mercy is because of what Jesus did for us. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you were willing to send your best to us, that he might endure what he did so that we could have life and have it abundantly. Thank you, Father, for the glory of the cross. Thank you for the struggle. Thank you for the anguish. Thank you for the times that we struggle. Thank you, Father, as you're still our answer because Jesus is our way. And we give you thanks and praise in him and in his name alone. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Let us sing, alas and in my Savior bleed. And the altar is always open for you.
we go forth, let us go forth bearing His cross, bearing His grace, bearing His love to those around us for His glory. In Jesus' name, God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.